Look at this. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the presence, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. That's the way a lot of people are. They don't realize when his presence is there. And they miss the moment. They miss when he comes in. We get so busy, we get so caught up doing what we want to do that we miss his presence. How many want to host his presence? Carry his presence. He said, I didn't know it, verse 17. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. The gate of heaven. He had an encounter with God where a ladder was lowered down. And angels were ascending and descending. And I've come to prophesy to you today. In spite of what you see in the natural, there is a ladder that's being lowered down in Dallas, Texas. There is a ladder that's being lowered down in your city, in your nation. Come on, receive it right now. There is a ladder that's being lowered down in cities. I prophesy to you, I declare over you that ladders are being lowered down in cities and you haven't seen, no, you ain't seen nothing yet. Miracles, signs, wonders. The Lord told me when he sent me here to this city, he said, tell my people that the voice of healing movement 2.0 has begun. It is here. I'm going to raise up healing evangelists. I'm going to raise up prophets, apostles, a company of people that will begin to ascend the heel of the Lord. Come on, anybody want to go higher? Come on, who wants to go higher? Come on, who's tired of the lowlands? Who's tired of living in the lowlands of religion? God wants you to begin to ascend. This ladder that's being lowered. This ladder that's being lowered. Into your city, into your nation. I prophesy to you, your cities and your nations will never, ever be the same again. God is turning around cities. He's shifting cities. They've been rioting. They've been burning. But the Lord says, get ready for a fresh fire from my throne that shall begin to come upon cities in this hour. And the very places where there have been riots, they will be turned into revivals. What is it going to take to see this? There's a word for this. The Lord came to me. He said to me, I was preaching this last year at CFNI. He said to me, he said, tell my people, I will meet them in the middle of the pause. That was before the pandemic took place. He said, tell my people, I'm in the middle of the waiting. He says, if you'll wait on me, I'll renew your strength. You'll mount up with wings as an eagle. You'll run and not grow weary, and you'll walk and not faint. Come on, are there any prophets in this house? Are there any prophetic people? Are there any eagles in this house? What is he looking for? He said, if you want to ascend, you have to learn to pause, to wait. You'll find me in the middle of the pause. You look at your iPod, you look at your phone with that little thing on there, there's a pause button. Before the fast forward button, there's a pause button in the middle. He said, if my people will learn to pause and wait in my presence, he said, I'll take them fast forward like they've never been before. Oh, lift your hands. Some of you have been living your life on reruns, rewinds, going in as psychopath Christians around and around and around on religious reruns. But God's ready to pull out the reverse in your life. If you'll pause, you'll stop going two steps backwards and one step forward. If you'll pause, you will accelerate into his promises. He said this to me. He said, tell my people that every suddenly is preceded by a sila. He said, if you'll learn to sila, he said, I'll cause you to have a suddenly. Now, I looked at the word sila, and the word sila means this to pause, to extol or lift up, to stop and listen. 
it's an instrumental interlude. It means to underline or highlight. So when God does something, instead of just passing on from that victory, to wait in that victory and underline it and highlight it and give him glory for what he just did. To say amen or so be it. To hang, to measure or weigh. To think, to contemplate, to meditate. Are you with me, church? Now listen to this. As I prayed, as I fasted, as I spent time in this, the clearest definition that I can see of the word sila is this. Write this down. To pause in his presence and to lift up his word. To pause in the presence of God and to lift up his word. So in the middle of a battle, anybody been going through a battle? In the middle of a fight, has anybody been in a fight? He said, instead of trying to do it by might and by power, no, it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Pause in my presence and lift up my word. Exalt my word over your situation. Oh, glory. Lift your hands like this. Raise your paws. Look in front of you. That's a pause symbol. I just had a play on words. Your paws. Raise your paws. Raise him. Every time you do this and you pause in his presence and you begin to lift him up. I lift you up, Jesus. I worship you. There is none like you. There's none like you. I worship you, Jesus. And I wait on you. I wait on you, Jesus. Oh, there's none like you. There's none like you. You begin to do that. You begin to lift him up. You begin to exalt him. And then all of a sudden, just like Jesus, when they wanted to kill him, he pressed the pause button and he passed right through the people. He froze everybody there. It was greater than the matrix. <laughs> he froze them and he went through them. Why? Because he was in the presence of God. Oh, lift those hands up. Pause in his presence. We wrote this song recently. Can we sing it over you? Come on, Zoe, sing it out. Lift those hands up and let's see La just a moment. We will pause in your presence. We will wait for the moments. Let's draw near. Oh, we draw near to you, Jesus. a deeper place we're going to come back to that in just a minute he said this to me in March he said I, I heard the Lord saying I'm adding length of days for many of my leaders and people during this time for what some would say is a loss of time and momentum is really a redemption of time and momentum for there are some of my servants who have not known how to rest some have forsaken my Sabbaths and some have not taken sabbaticals when I've said they've needed to rest. So in this time, yes, this redemption of time, I'm giving my body time to take back what has been stolen or lost. The plans of the enemy to take out many leaders and people prematurely will be foiled, says the Lord. Oh, lift your hands up. This pause is actually an acceleration because he's going to show you how to do things that you couldn't do before in the midst of the pause presence people presence people presence people are people that can't move without his presence can't sing without his presence can't live without his presence 
can't do anything about his presence. Presence pastors are pastors that are not concerned about how many people are in the building, but how much of him who is in the building. Presence pastors are not trying to please the people and keep the sound right and the air right. They want to please the master. They want him to be in the house. Presence prophets are not worried about their reputation. They want to make their self of no reputation and give him the glory. They don't move out of their gifting. They move out of his presence. They don't need to perform. I don't need to prophesy to make you feel good i don't need to prophesy for you to receive me i will not say a word unless he tells me to say a word that's what a presence prophet says i'm not here to perform i'm not a genie in a bottle you're not going to rub me and make me move i'm going to move out of the presence of god are there any presence prophets in the house are there any presence people in the house if you're not with me god call this trip off Call this trip off. Now in this book, I wrote this chapter called Messy Worship. And this is what I want God to restore. I believe God is restoring right now in this hour. Messy worship. I'm talking about alabaster box worship. Worship that's not cute and pretty. Worship that's not homogenized. Worship that's not, uh, that's not programmed. You can't even get in some places. You can't even move into the presence because they've got it all so mapped out that the next song starts at the end, just like clockwork. They got somebody over on the stage telling you what to do next. How about we let Holy Spirit be on the stage and tell us what is next? Presence churches are different. Presence sinners are about the kingdom. They're about His presence. And the more of His presence we get here, the more healings, signs, wonders, souls will be saved. Why? Because of His presence. So messy worship, you know, the kind of worship, that kind of worship when you dance like David until you can't dance anymore. When your heart is pounding out of your chest faster and faster as you get closer and closer looking into those beautiful eyes of fire. When like the woman with an alabaster box, you break it over the Lord's feet and let it run wherever it wants to run. Come on, are there any alabaster box believers in this house? Are there any presence people in this house? presence worshipers messy worship they worship they worship like this they worship and they let it flow where it goes